you've got mail. Good morning, everybody. You are tuned to Computer Stuka now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Emlon, your host for the next couple of hours, along with Katie. Good morning. Good morning. And Gal is here. Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day, everybody. Yep. Um, Spence is somewhere up north, and Nick is doing some political work. He said he's not going to be here for probably for the rest of this month. Every weekend he's out. But anyway, our number is 919-518-9773, Computer Stuka, Voice on Skype. And today's show is made possible by vMix Software and is sponsored by Tom Sinclair of Live Streaming Gear. So I was, I was thinking, and you tell me what you think. Uh-oh. I'm then thinking. Um, I, I had some, some comments from some of our audience. Our listeners. Listeners. Well, audience that are watching, actually. Oh, okay. Um, what are you guys thinking about taking it down to one hour? The show? Yeah. That's fine. Guy? Uh, oh, where's God? Oh, he just He's disappeared fine. concise. What what was uh, their concerns? It, that, that it was long for Sunday morning. The other question that I came, that I was asked is, can we do it sometime during the week? I mean, we we were never during the week. Like a, there are a lot of shows are in the evening during the week. Uh, guys, did you ask? Did you uh, go going going down for an hour sounds fine to me. Yeah. During the week, it will be evenings. And yeah, yeah, it has to be evenings. Others, others availability, but um, maybe I, I'm not against it. Yeah, I my schedule's crazy right now, so I already have a hard time doing Sundays. But I'm not against the the weekdays. It's just, I mean, I'm doing a bunch of stuff, so it's hard to do yeah, it during the well, week. Unless we do it at four a.m., you know. <laughs> Uh, Absolutely no not. No. I'm not alive at 4 a.m. L- literally, my body dies and I get resurrected. Don't worry. <laughs> I have a problem with that, so it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind the hour-long format. That's what most podcasts do. Most right. podcasts are around an hour. That's that's what, that's what some of those uh, comments were. You know, I mean, most of the other shows that – all the other shows that we watch or listen to are an hour. Yours is two hours. It was always two hours, and it was always, uh, we to tell the truth, we're kind of stretching it. It's it's not like there is content. I I, it it, we're we're trying to spread it out. Uh, We can cover it in in one hour. I'm not. We get it. We are tiring you. You don't want to see us for more than an hour. It's fine. I'd, I'd like, like you guys. You guys could talk for an hour, and then I could talk about my crap for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> Lose all the listeners and viewers. So, Alan, I mean, you're you're in the chat now, and I don't think there was anything from you. What do you think about this? To to go down to an hour and maybe move it sometime. During the week, uh, I'm not. I'll tell you what we need to do. Yeah. We need to take it down to an hour, but we need to do it four times a week. You're right. Uh, <laughs> wait, are you talking about moving it from Sunday? Because I figured you would do a show during the week and then do the show on Sunday, so you do two shows. Mm, I don't know, but I mean, we can do it Sunday evening, but that's still. I I, I was. No, not. I don't think we need to do two shows. What do you mean by doing two no, shows? No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I know you're kidding, doing... but uh, Katie, what did you mean? I thought we would always do the Sunday show and then every now and then do a weekday show, like a weekday show special. Oh. No, if we if we do it, we do it one time a week. 
and it'll be during during the week. That what will pick up a day during the week. Well, then the question is: is uh, are most of the viewers watching live, or are they watching afterwards? Because if they're watching live, then you want to stick to the same timetable, meaning around nine a.m. Sundays. Well, that's why I'm saying. I mean, we could transform it because the 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 users to tell you the truth there's yeah we have a lot of viewers but the other shows that are done during the week which is in the morning sometimes in the evening they also have a lot a lot of viewers but we don't want to so i think there are people that are listening, I mean, listening or watching live like a radio or like a TV. You don't even see them in the chat. They just yeah. turn it on and that's it. So to them, I don't know that it will matter. So uh, the answer is to go where the audience is. So if the audience right. wants to go during the week, we can go during the week. Yeah, well, so keep, it, it, keep, it, keep in mind one thing, Katie. Uh, I've been, we talked about it. I've been doing this show for six years. The number of people calling in the show has dropped, right? Completely. Like it, it, it's, it's almost non-existent. Right. Like we get one call every two months or something like that. Right. So changing that, right, they will still be able to listen to it at uh, 9 a.m. on Sundays because the rerun can run on 9 a.m. on Sundays. That's not a problem. They're not lo we're not losing these people. Uh, we are losing the option of interactivity of anyone who was listening live and wanted to call, but there's not a lot of those anyway uh, at this point. So moving it to any slot, doesn't matter which one, uh, it just needs to be convenient to us and whoever wants to listen live and be on the chat. On the chat, we used to have uh, maybe six people right and so we want to consult with these six, six people because they are they're constant they are joining they appreciate uh our voice they, right. they like and we like their uh involvement so well here, we want to make sure that they will move with, with whatever we move so alan is already answering and he says an hour is fine and he says, the only time I watch this afterwards is when I'm waiting for the live show to start on Sunday morning. But that still doesn't answer the question, uh, okay. Alan. Would you, would, is, is it, does it make it? Would a Tuesday it, evening work out, right? That's the question. Like, that's, like, for me, what would be? Personally, Sunday Sunday mornings is the only time where I don't really have anything. So doing it during the week is going to be a lot harder for me. Oh. Okay. But that's fair just enough. me. So no, that's fair enough. Okay. Well, we're going to have to find out also from Spans and from Nick. We'll do baby steps. We'll just cut the show to an hour first and then worry about shifting it later. That's also a possibility. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I, I was, I was, I had time to, to go through and sift through messages and there were a few of them that, that brought that up. So that's, that's good. Yeah. So Alan is saying any time would be fine with him. And Alan is one of the, Participating constants, yep. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of other quote unquote constant uh, viewers or listeners by the numbers, but we don't know who they are and we don't know if it'll affect them. So, I th in, in the past, when there was a lot of interaction um, and we had that's in the days of the forums where we had a forum that people will subscribe to and people will communicate during the week. We, I, I remember putting questionnaires. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, should we do it on this time? And should we move it this time? Should we do that? Uh, right now, it's the only time that we can talk to our audience is when we're doing when we're doing a live well, show. You can still put up a poll on where on the front page of uh, computer okay now com i uh, we we can do it, but I doubt people are going there to read anything. I think they only go there for sure you know we can we may be able to put it. Hmm. On the I can, special stage? I can, I can create a little video or let Kay, Katie do a little video. Here, do a little video. Mm-hmm. You know, like a, a oh, minute, that, that like a minute. Up. And put, put it, it in yes. the reruns? Yeah. Yeah, that's and, a good idea. You should um, start a, a email newsletter thing. Where uh, pe- um, people are not interested in that anymore, they no, used no, no. to. Not, oh, go no, ahead. Not not for to send out the to do it every week, but like if people want to sign up for news, but like specifically for the show, so uh, they'd volunteer their email address, and then if we have an like this poll thing, like hey, yeah. um, no, don't don't email them every week. Only when only when it's the show, we have questions for the audience about we're doing this thing. Can we get your input, like a survey sort of thing? Right. If people... I mean, we did, we did uh, try, uh, we did think about use, doing a Discord server, but uh, we feel I wouldn't, an email will be simple, yeah. I wouldn't want to do anything that the audience will have to install anything, to learn no, how to get it no, to it. all web, web-based. But that's yeah, why it, I think that if if you yeah. have on computers two k and um say if you sign um you can sign up with your email if yeah. you only if you want news with the show right and not news in general but news that's, with, uh, updates that's it updates yeah the there the downside of doing that is that a lot of people are leery they don't i mean you know I always told people we don't track who's coming in i mean if you If I wanted to know who's coming in and what they do and how long I don't have in any of these statistics that's why because I don't volunteer. want to have it yeah so but, by but having but, them but send wait their stuff but wait but that's that is because the audience is always afraid oh if I'm gonna go and watch they're gonna know who I am and the next I'm gonna get some emails and 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 marketing and stuff like that we don't do that I know but but they... you have but but I have we have to convince the audience that, look, this is just for notifications when there's something going on, like you know i I would like to if if there's something going on, and let's say we're not going to have a show, I would like to notify everybody and say, yeah, look, yeah, there's yeah. not instead of them coming in and said, well, what's going on what's what's happening what you know So and your, yeah, your concerns are valid and and the way to get over those concerns or to um address them is to be completely transparent so yes absolutely when, um, make a page I... and say and and say, "Hey, you can sign up for updates we're only gonna uh, we're only gonna send you emails for these reasons and these reasons only, and um we're not gonna spam or sell your information or all right. the other stuff there's and it's only it's vo- it's volunteer like But you people have to send in the willingly they have to do it themselves to send the information, yeah, yeah. and I'm not yeah, make sure to ask for social security numbers yeah and for, bank. Uh, and for bank. Uh, bank accounts yeah, yeah. 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 And... no, and I mean, I already have a a server on Delta Force that does what we call list server yeah. and and I can make. A list for this purpose that will be announce only you know list servers you talk back and forth, yeah, um yeah. but we can leave the the address of hosts at yeah to say if you if you want to to uh respond respond there, so people will not get everybody else's yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah okay all right that's that's good that's we'll, you see we'll, that's good we'll stuff work on we'll, it. We'll, yeah work we'll work on it 
because this yeah. is exactly what I do for my job, like coming up with the, it's but what it's like a marketing campaign, but marketing means that you're selling something. Right. I'm, we're not we're not physically we're not selling like with money. We're just trying to get a communicate an idea. Right. So I'll work with you on it, and we can um, come up with the messaging and help our viewers. Yeah. All right, Katie. Uh, Alan is asking about your cat. Oh yeah, he's just chilling. He likes to chill on that bookshelf, and uh, when he wants attention, and I'm going too long in meetings, he'll jump on. The he's top asking, of... "What's his name? Are you reading the chat?" No, I don't have it up. Oh, yeah. He said, "What's uh, what's your name cat's is... name?" He said, "So my... the cat's name is Jax, but he doesn't really know his name because I call him Baby all the time." <laughs> So, well, I had a guy come over uh, like a month ago to install a new sliding glass door, and he got scared. Not the guy, the cat got scared and was hiding all day, even though the guy was done in the morning. And so I was like, I couldn't find him. I was like, Jax, Jax, he didn't come. And then finally, like a few hours later, I was like, baby, where are you? And then he came running out. <laughs> so he <laughs> thinks his name is Baby. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's like the, well, who was it? it says that his brother always thought his name was Jesus Christ. Oh, every... yeah. His <laughs> mom was like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Jesus Christ, come here. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, we'll we'll work on this. What else is happening technically? Technically. Technical stuff. I absolutely love Chad GPT. So I'm taking classes and um Whenever I have a question to clarify something, I just go to ChatGPT and um, I'll ask it. I'll um, ask questions that I got wrong on a quiz or something or a test or or a concept I don't really understand, and and not only will it give me the right answer, but it'll explain why it's the right answer, and it's been so invaluable, especially for taking an online class where um, it's it's kind of self-paced like there's not a teacher teaching it it's just here's the book here's what you have to read here are the assignments and here's the test uh and so i'm using chat gpt as my teacher <laughs> but don't worry because people are be like well what if the information is wrong um and it could be yeah but, sure. um but i have the book with me and so when i when i come across the term or concept that i'm having a hard time grasping i when i read it in the book or the test or whatever then I, I asked chat GPT to clarify so that I can understand. And it's been a really great learning tool. Nice. So I've, been, I've been using it I, a lot. I was reading, I mean, we can talk about this. I was reading an article this week uh, that was written by some AI experts and, and pioneers. And what they come up with is they say that in there's a very good chance that in a hundred years AI will destroy humanity. There's not gonna be I mean humanity is gonna be extinct. Everything like robot everything is gonna be just AI and robots and all that and, and uh -huh. uh, you know, you think about it. AI cannot survive without human interacting with it. Yeah. Either behind the scene up front to train it and all that, but well, a hundred years. Like, it's yeah. every sci-fi plot. So if they watch the sci-fi movies and the AI overlords take over, see, we only need to cause concern when AI takes over Boston Dynamics. Because if they take over Boston Dynamics and they get their own bodies that can do backflips and lift heavy machinery, then we're in trouble. I think I think it's uh, it's it's more complex than that. And I know I know there's a lot of naysayers, and I know. That there are some of the experts who just see a very bleak future, and I'm and I'm not saying that bleak future isn't a possibility, but I think stuff needs to be into, uh, taken into perspective. But when we look at history in general, right? Uh, technology is as it's invented, right? It is. First, uh, uh, really, um, 
like there's a a fan base around it, right? And there are the naysayers, and there's usually some sort of buildup into um, an event, like something that defines it uh, uh, going forward. And sometimes that can be a catastrophe. But if we look at the cycles, right? Uh, the way I feel is eventually these cycles, uh, they create out of this catastrophe, they create something, uh, something unique, something new. And I do not know, uh, probably because I tend to be an optimistic person in general. I, I am very cynic uh, about life in general, but there's also some optimism there. Uh, and I do not feel that at least what we're seeing today is in any way going that direction. Now, those who are going to create the catastrophe is not the AI side. It's probably people who uh, will try to manipulate AI right. in some way, right? Uh, and, and I think the discussion today about how bad things might go into the future, right, is important. I really hope that this discussion will happen also on political circles where policy is being created, right? And But I, I also hope that it won't be fear-mongering. It won't be based on fear. It will be based on... Hopefully. Uh, yeah, it'll be based on uh, facts, on, yeah. on how to measure the facts, on how to make policy based on those facts and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, we do not have a good track record in humanity of doing that, but I hope <laughs> that is how things will go forward. Sometimes we do see things uh, happen in a, in a positive way. Sometimes not. We'll, we'll yeah. see. But uh, wait all a second. that is hold, to say one thing. Hold, hold yeah, your thought. Ahead. Hold your thought. Uh, we have a caller. Good morning. Oh, awesome. Good morning. How are you? Fine, Mike. How are you? I'm fine. I have a couple of questions that concerning computers, if you're interested or ready. All right. Yes, of course. All right. Number one, I was a longtime customer of AT&T, and I had a modem router from AT&T, one box, both functions. Mm -hmm. I switched to Spectrum, and they gave me a modem. Right. They sold me a modem, if you will. And then I said, well, I want wireless. And they said, well, you need a router for that. So they gave me another box. And that box has one band for Wi-Fi. The AT&T box had two bands, 5K and 2.5K. And I wanted okay. to that, what, really... switch boxes. Oh, go ahead. But I seem to be—I no. seem to be unable to do that. First of all, what do you mean they, uh, the the AT and T has two bands? You can't use the AT and T with Spectrum, the box. Well, maybe, well, maybe well, you right. can. I think no, that's no, no but you have you have to give it back anyway. You have AT and T. No, didn't ask for it back. No, not necessarily. I'm not. Sometimes it's true, but maybe in his case, it's not. If he's not paying anything, any bills to them, and he does not need to return the box, then he might be able to use that as a router. Uh, well, but I, I cannot get the AT&T box to connect to Spectrum with the cable at coax connection. Right, that's right. Uh, uh, the yeah, coax that's right. connection won't work. It no, what you that, can do, but no, uh, that that part won't work. Even even if AT gave him a coax connection, right, that wouldn't work because that has to do with the communication directly with the uh, routers, uh, whatever is giving you um, internet traffic, IP addresses on on the ISP side. That needs to stay spectrum, okay. But it can be possible. Uh, so on the uh, AT and T uh, router modem, how many ports do you have in the back? One moment. I think it has four. Yeah, you, you should have 
Four ports. Starting and at, one additional starting at the top. It's starting at the top. There's phone lines. Then right. there's ONT broadband with a red background, and it's okay. blocked off. Then there are right. four Ethernets, one USB, one DSL broadband, a reset button, a cable line, which is what brought the signal in Mike, this morning. Mike, do you see four and, Ethernet ports? Yes, I do. And their number is one, two, three, and four. Correct. Okay. That's... So the simplest thing for you at this point, the simplest thing is just to plug, uh, uh, take a, an Ethernet cable from the Spectrum uh, mm -hmm. modem and just plug it yeah. to one of those four. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's your okay. first step. And your second step is to disable the DHCP server on the uh, AT&T modem. Those are the two steps you need to take. Actually, All right, no. he's not going to, oh, that's disable right. Disable yeah. the DHCP. Yeah, you, you have yeah. something on both of, the, of these called the DHCP server, and these are going to clash, okay? So you want to disable okay. on, the, on the, actually on the router, on the AT&T one, you want to disable the DHCP, so Spectrum will manage all of the DHCP. The Spectrum modem will manage all of the DHCP allotment. Okay? Oh, Assignments. Hold it. Hold it. Gal. He yeah. said that Spectrum gave him a modem. Then they gave him a router. So he's going to have to take the router from Spectrum out of the picture. That is correct. At that point, yes. the modem does not have a DHCP. Because the modem is just an interface. The router does the DHCP. So he's not going to have that problem. He should leave the, the AT&T doing the DHCP because he's going to use only one router. Like you said, it's router your, is what your, does... Your router, no, router does routing, okay? Yeah. DHCP does IP assignment. And I do think their modem... I used to have... No, I used to have their modem and their modem will not do no modem will do dhcp if you look into the modem it doesn't do dhcp because remember a modem has only one port the four ports that's the router that's built into the modem a modem cannot uh service more than one device okay it's that's why okay. we always got that's why they are modem routers or just modems like when you buy the the spectrum or uh, yeah the, the the one that works with spectrum the surfboard which is a modem that you can buy or yeah. it doesn't do dhcp the router will do the dhcp you can t then if you're using a modem router yes you have to disable the router and make it Remember the word we we always used as a pass through. That's well, that's, that's yeah, when you that's don't use the time. router. Say I'm using you just as a modem. I'm pass pass it pass everything through to wherever I'm going to connect you to. I, that's the way I understand okay, it. And, and, that, and that pass through should be from the modem to the router. Uh, to the router, and yeah. when it gets to the router, it goes to Ethernet. If you have a modem only box, you don't have a pass through. Yes. The only time you have a pass through is if it's a modem router into one unit. But and you're I saying have that Spectrum a modem only, and I'm trying to clarify. You what said cable goes from between the two boxes. Okay, you you have one box. From AT&T. Right. You have two boxes from Spectrum. Right. Right. The Spectrum setup is a modem, standalone modem, which from then goes into the second box that they give you, which is a router. Hold on. On the modem, yeah. how many Ethernet right. jacks do you have? Yeah. How many Ethernet jacks on the modem? Not on the AT&T, on the Spectrum. Just one. Yeah. 
See, that's okay. why it's always. So the 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 AT and T is a modem router. Yes, agreed. Right. So and, and we do not want its modem. Right. We just want to use it as router. a router. I I can so tell. Bring 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 the cable from the spectrum Ethernet to right. the modem router Ethernet. Correct. Well, yes, but because you're not using AT&T's infrastructure, you're going to just use the router, so you're going to hook it up to one of the four and not the red one. Right. Yeah, the right. the right. And and okay. I'll, I I you know, I don't I don't know how if if it's true or not, but as far as I know they will ask you for the modem router box. You'll have to return it to them. Uh, they, it took, when I right. had that and I did away with this, it took them three months to say, well, we never got that. I said, oh, and I did have well, it in it, the box. So it, I get, because. It's, 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 it's been more than, it's been more than a year. Okay. So it's not a problem. I would still, and God, correct me if I'm wrong. I would still think that it will be more efficient to buy a new router current well, router you know you know my position on this wi-fi <laughs> yeah and in, in the home right you need to buy you actually need to buy premium equipment yeah like it you need to pay for this but you pay it one time and it'll last for a very long time uh, but it needs to be above grade on the uh, on the chip stuff. I used to use a lot of chip um, uh, routing, Wi-Fi boxes, the, the switches. Buy them on the cheap. And the thing is, I spent yeah. so much money on these chip stuff because they wouldn't be exactly <laughs> what. And so I I added another patch and I added another solution, and always trying to squeeze uh, on it. Eventually, it it cost me more. Um, the uh, higher end equipment that I bought about five years ago is still kicking, still working. I have I do not need to uh, interact with it too much, and if I do, is just to uh, you know approve a firmware upgrade or something like that. So. The, it's solid. It it works. Uh, no longer have any issues. Now, if you want to go with the cheap stuff, then uh, like use whatever you have and and reuse it. Know that you are probably going to encounter some issues uh, with with patching one thing to another. Okay, really understand that. Um, okay. The you other, need to the other out thing how to disable the modem. Uh, the, the the modems need to assign network uh, addresses on the uh, on the second one on the AT and T one, right? Because it might not it might not uh, do anything on the uh, router side uh, until that's switched off. So you need to see if there's a setting that says uh, sort of uh, um, there's still there's still going to be a clash though. I'm not, now that I'm thinking of it. Because we're not using a WAN port, there's no WAN port Ethernet there. Correct. Right. The the modem does pass a DHCP assignment from outside the network, right? And so it needs if it's on one of the uh, ports uh, from one to four that has a DHCP assignment of its own, it won't get an address. I think there's, that's there's a very. There. Possible, and I don't know about this. Yeah. All, all the other thing I can add here, Mike, is you're not going to have any kind of support on that AT and T box. You cannot call them if you have a problem. You're going to have to do a lot of research to find out what's going okay. on. You okay. spend. You can spend about a hundred by hundred dollars and buy a good router. For what you're doing, it's it's going to be good enough 
And then you have something that's A, it's current, it has the latest software, and you have support for it. That, that and it's yours. What? And it's yours. What are you going to do if you spend a lot of time into this and you finally figure out how it's going to be? And then somebody wakes up at AT&T and says, hey, you have one of our modems. Yeah, I don't think I, 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 I'm, I'm with Mike here. I don't think that's the problem. I do think. Uh, yeah, I do think that understanding how everything needs to be connected is important, right? Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. do like to tinker, so I definitely am up for the challenge, but I uh, understand that, uh, that this challenge might, might end up with, with issues that you did not expect, that's all. Yeah. Well, if I go out and spend Earth money on a, on a router, what am I looking for? What brands or... Mm -hmm. So designations. Most of the brands carry. today sold by any of the big chains, they're they're decent, right? Yeah, um, any of them. Um, I do not know the size of your home uh, and the layout, so I do not 14, know. If, 1,400, but, 1400 square feet, flat, one floor. Yeah, so and most, I've been able to, yeah, my phone you, works, usually works will need well to with one. Wi-Fi from my bedroom at the other end of the house, so. Yeah, usually one, be... uh, one, one access point is enough, so a single modem router uh, can, can work. Uh, Brand-wise, I do not think you're limited. Look for, if you're buying something today, look for Wi-Fi 6, which is the latest. And look and make sure that it also has um, uh, the old bands A and G. Uh, I don't. I don't think A is important anymore, but G uh, that that it's still supported because you want backward compatibilities with all of your uh, oldest equipment uh, in, in at home. Okay. Um, is much better at giving the points on these than me, but uh, what you look today on equipment that you're, you're buying today is probably Wi-Fi 6. That's, that's, the, that's the protocol that the, code the new phones are supporting and provides better, uh, better control between uh, uh, device and router. Okay, thank you, very yeah. helpful. And you can and you can call and and if you run into a problem, you can call me in in between. You know that. Okay. All right. But the key the key point is I must use the spectrum modem to get the signal from the street you have into to. the house. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. That would be true. Can, now, now, even wait. If you have signal even if you had or something, wait, you wait. Have a point. Yeah. Wait. Wait a second. That is not entirely true, well, because you, you can, can buy something yes. with that, that supports others. Right. right. You can buy your own modem that is Spectrum compatible. If you want to, uh, at this point, you shouldn't, yeah. because they used to charge for them. I don't think they're charging you for the modem, right? That's, I think that's why you got a modem and not a modem router. Possible. The modem, but, I yeah. think they do not charge, but the modem, the, the router, modem router they, they, yeah. uh, they do. Yeah. yeah. One, one thing, by the way, one thing you can do, which is something that I did back, back when I was with Spectrum, probably 10 years ago now, um, was uh, look at uh, local marketplaces, you know, like uh, Facebook, uh, OfferUp, all of those. Uh, and you'll be surprised there are people who are selling their old equipment because they switched to, you know, fiber so, or something yeah. else in the neighborhood. And then you can find a Doxis uh, uh, um, a modem router for yep. 15 bucks, you know, 20 bucks or something like that. And that might be what you're looking for. Right? And that, that would oh. be a lot easier yeah. and seamless. Yeah, because that will be single box. You look it up. Uh, connect uh, whatever you need to, to be wired, and the rest is wireless, and it's all handled with a single box. Right. 
So that, if you're looking right. for a now, cheap no, way to get out of it, wait, that would that be the best thing What would you say, Mike? a single box that is labeled Spectrum, correct? Well, uh, yeah, you'll see Doxis, uh, D-O-C-S-I-S. Doxis, probably Doxis 3. Yeah. Uh, three, and I think there's also six, right? Uh, I left Spectrum before that, so yeah. I'm not sure. But yeah. If you want to consult on the specific and you have uh, uh, Amram's contact, then I would, I would uh, uh, look at the modem that you have today, find its model uh, on its back or whatever, and send Amnon a, an image, and we can we can we yeah. can figure out the what you need to look for when you're looking for an alternative modem. Okay. Thank you, folks, very much. You're welcome, Appreciate Mike. It. Take care. And Mike. By the way, I I be, could before, not before you hear drop you one guys second. until I uh, picked up the phone. Would you the would you be okay works? with dropping the, the show for an hour and changing the date? Were were you Mike? Yes. Were you listening that we were considering shortening the show? And maybe changing the days where were you on were you on the air? Were were you watching us when we were talking about that? No. no. What what would you think if I could we... not hear I I could not hear anything until I call called you. Why? Oh I don't know. Well somebody else is saying I could I, I could, I could... I could on a the the classical station WCP. I could oh, do that okay. Immediately. Uh, okay. Okay. So, what do you think if we if we change the days to to some evening during the week for the show, and if we took it down to just one hour? Well, taking it to one hour, fine. Uh, the evening of the week, it it's variable for me. Okay. Uh, but if you think another time is better than Sunday mornings? That's fine. Okay. I that's, adapt. That's what we wanted to know. Yep. All right, Mike. Okay, but now about, about oh. the sound, the sound. Should I be hearing you guys other than Not, through the phone, which I'm using now? Uh, you should be able. I mean, if you're hearing another station, like classical music on the computer but then you're not going to hear us or it may be on top of it but yeah i mean no, hold on how how did you listen to the show before well the last no. time several weeks ago i called in uh, i i came in and i i may have used the phone or i may have just used the computer i don't remember uh you, you go I, to computers 2 knowcom oh wait a and, second and wait now. wait wait a second hey mike Yes. Are you watching us now? Yes, I can see Super Dad. You can see Super Dad. And if okay. you, and at this point, you obviously don't have your audio up because there's no echo. So you're only on the phone. You're hearing it. You're hearing us through the phone, right? Yes, correct. Okay. On the bottom of the video. If you if you hover over the video, yeah. on the bottom left, yeah. you see the pause button, right? The two uh, the two vertical uh, uh, bars. Yes. yes and I next do. to it, there is a speaker. Okay. Is there is mentioning. there an X on the speaker? Yes. Okay, yes, that's why is. you don't hear us. So once you hang okay, up, sorry. don't 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 uncheck it now because it will create v feedback. Yeah, un un understood. I yeah. understand what you're telling me. Yeah, that's why. Sorry for my oversight. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bye, Mike. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Maybe maybe embedded video have uh, switched to uh, mute. Start as muted. It's not starting as muted. I'll bet you that he muted it because if you reload the the page, it's it plays. The only one that's muted is uh, Facebook. Facebook okay. starts muted. Also, it might have saved it. Um, sometimes 
yeah I'll, like on youtube is i'll mute a video uh because i'm working on something or whatever and then i'll close it and then later on open up a new youtube window and it'll save my preference of yeah. it being muted and it takes me a second to realize like oh i muted it right okay i'm gonna think uh there's place for another 20 second video that you put between streams is are you muted <laughs> can you not hear audio here are some simple steps to help you yeah. actually that might be beneficial to have like a quick tip of the week like video or something yeah, well, yeah but that's work uh, katie we are not good at work uh, no, we are I'm lazy too, I'm, no it's not that we're lazy we're just busy you can call now you want. what what <laughs> I mean, you, you, you talk, we were talking about sound, but here it is. Uh, Morn is saying no audio. So I asked, I said, no, audio, uh, no audio at all. And I checked the, the, on the online yeah. and it's fine. And then he says, oh, I should have told you it came back after a few, it came back a few minutes ago. Which I don't understand. I mean, I I get lights here when there's no audio online. But and well, and your friend was uh, talking in the chat, so he was hearing us. Yeah, I mean, everybody's uh, hearing us. That's what I don't understand. How I mean, and, and I'm sure Morn, who is one of the constant users, I mean, uh, uh, listeners. It did not do anything to make it come back. It just mm -hmm. came back from him. So I don't understand this. Well, I wonder if the video was frozen too. If it was, I'm just wondering. Audio. So yeah, was the because it could have been his internet went down. What was was the video working and you couldn't hear us? And Mike is saying audio from your site is fine. Yeah. So he's he he really he knows now how to just listen. Awesome. Well, he did say that he was listening to classical station WCT, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, maybe there was an issue there. It it could be. It it it's yeah. it's very possible. Yeah. I'll tell you Mike what. Mentioned that as well. That's why I'm saying. So. Um, okay. More says. I mean, Morn. Says video was fine, not muted either. Audio just came back. That's weird. weird. Yeah, that's weird. Unless we were quiet. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. I certainly have a hard time. I tell time you being what. Quiet. I tell you what. Sometimes, and again, tip of the day. You know, some in some shows, people will call in. And won't say a thing. And turns out when you get them to say something, they thought that you call in to listen. Uh, oh. I mean, well, uh, well I'm just I'm just time, listening so and we tell them, no, you need to listen on the website where you saw this number. Uh, oh. Okay. You know, so yeah, it's it's uh that it's it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, so uh, we were talking. Um, uh, now I don't remember. I don't know if you remember what you were talking about when I say hold it because we have a call. We were talking about AI. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's right. Yeah. And uh, apocalyptic uh, stuff. Yeah. Uh, I had a point, which I need to remember what that point is. Okay. Well, if it comes something back. Something about optimism, but yeah. Um, All right. Something about, well... I think I do. I do know, and and I'll I'll make it short because I did talk a lot. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, the thing is, I do think that we are going to course correct this piece of technology and what Katie was describing. The way she uses it, for example, it's a very positive way. It can be abused very easily as well, right? She's yeah. taking the test online, uh, and and she does it on on her on her side, right? And she can get assistance from uh, an AI machine uh, that, that helps her during the test. Uh, 
whether it's something she types in or whether it'll be, I don't know, something that does it completely automatic for her. That is always a possibility, right? But the key is with any new technology- Just to clarify, to find... I do not do that. So if my school I know, I know, is watching, no, no. No, we know we do not. I, nobody has a doubt that, that, that you are doing that from your peers, for those who know you, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, right, is even though the technology can be abused, right? It's like, it's, like, uh, it's like the Wikipedia thing, right? Everybody says Wikipedia is uh, unreliable because anybody can edit it, right? I think that is what makes it more reliable than anything else, especially yeah. today when we understand that every content is created with some sort of agenda, right? With somebody trying to push their own view on you. Wikipedia is the best balancing act out there, right? There are so many voices that eventually things balance out and there are rules uh, of, of conduct that say this needs to be fact-based somehow. Somebody should already be vetting it and there is a, a clear uh, explanation of what that means, right? And so when we move forward into uh, using these tools more and more, we need to make sure that whatever we get out of them is always rooted in something that we call real, something that is fact-based, something that is uh, uh, precise. Uh, and today, we're still at the point where these machines are hallucinating, right? They're, they're creating something out of unreliable sources, right? So we need to make sure that the sources are more reliable. And I think because we are at that stage, that is not a threat right now. There was one one other point. All of the naysayers, all of the apocalyptic uh, uh, views of this, they are giving too much strength to something that is not necessarily as strong as they mean. Uh, we hear about the Turing test, which means when when we test a machine, does it um, does it trick us to think that the other side is human, right? And that is an interesting, uh, um, it is an interesting exercise, but it's not necessarily the right exercise. I was, uh, I encountered something a couple of weeks ago uh, called the pencil test or something like that. And it's about a professor uh, uh, teaching uh, about AI and ethics and stuff like that. And he, uh, he presents a pencil in his hand, puts uh, two googly eyes uh, stickers on it, and gives it a name, uh, calls him, I don't know, Jack, right? This is Jack the Pencil. And he uh, he talks about the abilities of the pencil and gives him a, a personality, basically. And two minutes into, into this, he just uh, uh, takes that pencil and it breaks it in half. And the reaction, right, from everybody there, about half, gasp in in uh, in shock mm -hmm. we as humans right we tend to humanize things very very fast we give something we give power right we give uh, uh, an, an essence a personality we can give it to a rock we can give it to a, to a to a to a piece of inanimate object right and and create affection to it we do it with uh, we do it with 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 dolls, right? We do it we do it with anything. And so, the idea that a tool, right, can overcome us creates a lot of fear in us. But it's not necessarily rooted in reality. It's not rooted in its actual abilities. It's not rooted in what can actually be done with it. And we need to start thinking critical about that, okay? There's no need to humanize ChatGPT. It is not a soul. It is not a, a living thing. It is a tool. It has its limitation. Mm -hmm. Can we make use of it? Yes. Is it okay to make use of it? I would say yes. Absolutely. It just needs to be, there's, there need to be set ground rules. and. Um, and I think it's very possible to do that. And I think we are on the right track. It's not uh, that things have gone amok. Marketing has gone amok, right? 
but not reality. So we, we really need to focus on the facts, on what can it do right and how you can use it. And that's where it needs to lead us. And that's why I don't think the bleak view of a, an, a, an apocalyptic future is going to take us anywhere, right? That is the wrong exercise at this point. It is important. It's good as an imagination thing, but it's not about going forward. Can I do a tangent? I um, I think the Wikipedia thing, like like not thinking it's a reliable source, is so dumb. It, because uh, now that I'm taking these classes, of course, the first thing the professor says is like, "You can't use Wikipedia. Don't source Wikipedia." Which oh, you okay. can source Wikipedia, which no, no, is no. fine. I'm I know. Let me that. wait. Let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish because I'm about to say what you're about to say. I'm a guessing, but I go to Wikipedia all the time, and they source their own information. So uh, I just go there and I go to their sources and then I go straight to the where they got the information. So like it, this 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 uh, notion that it's not reliable because you can edit it, but every time you edit something, you have to have a source to back it up. And so I, I just you know I'm still using Wikipedia, but I'm just going directly to the source. It is the best source of information today. I like I would I on on any topic. Whether it's whether it's scientific or political or because because of that because there is this ground rule of things need to be sourced and if they're not sourced then the first thing you see on a page right is this is unreliable don't use this data we're still working on it right we need more sources <laughs> that is exactly the way information should be presented. And that is why it's the most reliable source of information right now. Because when I read a news article, right, they do not source their information. When I read a book, uh, a non-scientific book, it's not always sourced, right? So it's the opinion of whoever wrote it. So that's the thing. It's like there's, there's this fear, right, of... of of good knowledge, <laughs> and that needs to be a uh, 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 changed. I have a I have a visitor here. Upper upper. Hey. Yeah, she's called Chloe. She's she's a great, a great little dog. Yes, and she comes to me because everybody at home knows her, and I'm a visitor, and I give her attention. So, so uh, Katie. You said before that you're not cheating with AI. Mm -hmm. That's if, that's a that's it, a that's a good thing, and it's a good thing that we live here, because here is well, the here is the story. Okay. Turkish authorities have arrested a student for cheating during a university entrance exam by using a makeshift device linked to AI software to answer questions. The student was spotted behaving in a suspicious way during the exam at the weekend and was detained by police before being formally arrested and sent to jail pending trial. Another wow. person who was helping the student was also detained. So some countries will do it to you. Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, well, over here, well, they I would mean, just say, get out of here. You fail. It's, I don't right? know what the law is, though. It's, yeah. like, I, think it's less, I think it's less about them using AI and more about them cheating. Because well, some countries have a more intense reaction to students cheating on stuff. That's amazing, though. Yeah. Amazing. Now to, <laughs> to I wonder, spend, so does that mean to, like they were there, they were at a place uh, being proctored and somehow they had like an AI machine like in their pencil or pen or something? Like how were they cheating? They have their phone on them? I, I, they, question. There was a, I, I read this article, this was months ago, about, um, I think it was in China, they busted this cheating ring of students, and it was like this really sophisticated thing that they put together, where they would cheat in the class, and, and somehow I think one of them got like the answers, and they would offset the answers so that they didn't score 100, because obviously that'd be a dead giveaway, and then they cracked this cheating ring and it turns out it was like half the school was involved or something. It was this crazy, like, 
like a dark alley underground <laughs> cheating ring at a school. Yeah. Um. And 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 on still on AI, SoftBank has developed AI voice conversion technology aimed at reducing the psychological stress on call center operators by altering the voices of angry customers to sound calmer. I just imagine like the chipmunk filter. <laughs> I mean, this is at least, you know, that's nice well, for well, them. Hold on, hold on. So an angry customer calls, right? Yeah. And whoever's picking up, he hears a calm voice and he answers calmly, right? Yeah. Right? What would that do to the angry customer, I, though? I don't know. It would just go <laughs> off. Do you not understand what's going I, on? I, I, I don't know that the customer knows it, though. He wouldn't know, but the other side is answering calmly yeah. all the time. Oh, it's yeah. It's like, you're, are, you you're are you ignoring me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a form of de-escalation, actually. So, like, one of the things that they teach you to de-escalate a situation is try to respond calmly back because people have a tendency to want to match energies or match reactions. So, if somebody's, like, flying off the handle, if you try to respond calmer, uh, they will they won't be, like, super-duper calm, but, like, it'll hopefully stop from them ex escalating to a point of non-coherence. Maybe. I don't know. It's, It'll it's, be interesting to see the results of it. Yeah. It's 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 interesting. <laughs> but you know what? I think it's gonna be triggering like Pavlo's dog experiment, uh where they're gonna hear the calming voice and know that the customer is angry. So because the voice is gonna change. So they'll know that oh oh dang, this customer is yelling really loud, even though I I can't hear the yelling, I know they're mad. Like I can Maybe. hear that. Like the, the, it just yeah that's that's the thing it's like I cannot see it ending up uh, uh, like positive somehow it seems like this is something that is going to blow up <laughs> it's like there's no. no I don't see it as a solution but it's an interesting mistake I would say I would I would have done something different completely right if you want an AI uh, filter, some sort, yeah. Before the call, the person on the uh, on the on the the person the person calling saying, right? There's an AI uh, listening here, and if um, if, uh, um, if if you yell at if her, you, if you will raise your voice, right, your call will be disconnected immediately, right? I think that would be a lot more effective than tricking either side, right? Then oh. then 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 modifying it. It's like we're going to train our AI to detect when you're angry. And if you're angry, right, we can't help you. Call up call us when you're calm. I think that will be a lot more effective. Will it will it pass? Probably not because the the the, the marketing department say, no, you're gonna annihilate our customers or whatever, right? But I think that would be a much better solution than any other. All right. That makes sense. Now, do you use Outlook? Yes. Uh, yeah, it works. Yeah, of course. Okay. Microsoft is making changes to Outlook for consumers to enhance account security as part of its Secure Future initiative. Starting September 16th, the company will end support for basic authentication for Outlook personal accounts, requiring users to access their email through apps using modern authentication. Microsoft will also remove the light version of the Outlook web application on August 19th and discontinue support for Gmail accounts in Outlook.com. On June, on June 30th, users of affected email apps will be notified by the end of June to update their settings or configure reconfigure their accounts. Wait, I'm confused because I use Microsoft's authentication app. Yeah, it won't affect you 
Yeah, the year you're already using it for work, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, my old work had it, and and now I just kept it, and so my school uses it now. Okay, so you're okay. Right. So yeah, you. This is for anybody who's using Outlook.com, basically, um, uh, oh, as, as their email. And there are a few ways of using Outlook.com, yeah. right? And one of them is that light uh, website, and that's going away. That's one thing that they said. I think it's I think it's bullshit. I think they should keep it, but and just update its uh, authentication uh, scheme. But that's probably another set of development, and they would rather go away with it. So that's one piece of bad news. Uh, but it's not a horrible piece of bad news. It's just it sucks. The second one, which is, I think, is a bit of bad news, is those who really like Outlook.com's interface and have used it in order to manage their Gmail account, that's going away as well. Yeah. Right? So they won't be able to get uh, uh, Gmail uh, mail. But they didn't say that they're not going to be able to get Pop mail. So they might still be able to get Gmail uh, through Pop. Maybe they had just a different interface to that. So unclear here. Uh, whether they're going away with Pop and IMAP. Um, and three is what they started with is the authentication method. And that's a good piece of news. Absolutely. It means, it means username password is not going to be the way to use it. They're going to switch to basing it on the authenticator app or basing it on, um, on passkeys. Uh, and all of the modern solutions that exist today for security, which are better than just username and password. And this is, this is not a surprise. Uh, it, they declared back in what, 20, I think when, when Windows 10 came out, right? When they came out with the concept that they called Windows Hello, which is their uh, OS, their OS, uh, the Windows OS solution for security, uh, which incorporates uh, multiple ways of logging in, like uh, you know the the, the fingerprint. Uh, there are Windows Hello um, supported webcams, uh, which also include uh, IR um, infrared um, sensors, which help. Uh, um, they're, they're doing two things. They're doing infrared and they're doing also depth uh, uh, sensoring. And that allows image-based uh, authentication like uh, a face, uh, uh, like FaceTime, uh, uh, face lock or whatever they call it on, on Apple. Uh, the, what it does, it makes sure that a flat image of a face, for example, would not be able to log in, but you can still uh, log in with your face. So uh, stuff like that, connect, the, I do it, it is the most convenient way to log in into my work laptop because the laptop has that incorporated. All I need to do is open it. It sees me, detects that it's an actual person uh, uh, sitting next to it and the face has, uh, the face print has been implemented. It is all authentic, it's a part of the face recognition and all of that. Is done locally, not online, right? So there's no leakage of information here that uh, might be dangerous. And still, that that detection decrypts any of the security keys that says, okay, this person can log in, right? That is a, a very important convenience on the one hand and a good design on the other hand for security, right? When you so, say uh, like log that. in with your face, I just picture those 90 sci-fi movies where like people yeah. had to put their palm up against the panel and it would scan their panel or put their <laughs> eye right next to it. And so I'm right. like, you take your iPad or your phone and you put it right up next to your face. And it goes, yeah. No, I yep. think they did. I, I think they did an excellent uh, job with it. I'm guessing Apple has something similar. I haven't, I haven't well, seen Well, the, yeah, the, yeah, they have. So, a, yeah, now, yeah. now. The article goes on to say the latest versions of Outlook, Apple Mail, and Thunderbird will support these changes, while the new Outlook for Windows and Mac apps will continue to support Gmail accounts. 
Yeah, but that's that's something else. That's that's the way to authenticate from right. the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it says the com, it's understandable that they're they don't care too much about other sources, and that's fine. Yeah, I mean they're. Uh, I mean it sucks, but it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's their prerogative. I think it's not. It also yeah. said Microsoft is also migrating Windows Mail and Calendar users to the new Outlook for Windows app ahead of ending support for the built-in apps later this year. I thought Windows Mail was gone already, but well, I guess it's not. it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. It's yeah. still there and it still sucks. So whoever is using it, I, I, I feel for you because it's a very yeah. bad design uh, piece of software. Absolutely. And you should definitely migrate out of it. Most of the problems that I have with Email users is when they're using Windows Mail. Um, another thing that is changing, and I'm not, I don't use Google GPay, but it says after announcing a shutdown date in February, Google's GPay app has officially stopped working for users in the U.S. So yeah, well, they replaced it with Wallet. Uh, it was a transition. It wasn't just a shutdown. Oh. Yeah. Okay, they're saying that they're shutting it down. Yeah, there, there, was, there was an old way of doing things, and there's a new way of doing things, and they pretty much match. They're saying start, starting on June 4th, GPay, as was the name of the app on Android home screens, automatically signed U.S. users out. This is only in the U.S. now. Yeah, because they switched to wallet. I'm just saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, attempting to log in again explains how the Google Pay U.S. app is no longer available. So you can still tap and do this and that. I don't, I don't, I never used it. I don't, I don't think anybody was tied too deeply to the GPay <laughs> app. Let's put it that way. And if you are, I would love to listen how it affected you because uh, as far as I recall, it was only about how to pay to Google and they, it was a first iteration of their uh, uh, touch um, paying options, but it wasn't, it wasn't as solid or as stable as uh, what's currently available. So, Okay. I, I didn't know how important that is for yeah. users. Um, this is this is here is is uh, that, that that's bad. A study claims to have proof of what some have suspected: return to office mandates are just back channel layoffs in post COVID work culture is making everyone miserable. HR software Biz Bam Bamboo HR surveyed more than 1,500 employees, a third of whom work in HR. The findings suggest the return to office movement has been poorly executed failure, but one particular figure stands out. A quarter of executives and fifth of HR professional hoped return to office mandates would result in staff leaving. While that statistic essentially admits the quiet part out loud, there was some merit to that belief. People did quit when RTO mandates were enforced at many of the largest companies, but it wasn't enough. So that's one way for a big company to lay off people without saying we're laying them off. So it sounds right. better to the market. It sounds better to the employee as well, right? Well, it's, yeah, they, they that's believe right. It's their choice. Uh, well, but no, no. But you know what? It's not good for the employee because if you get laid off, you get some benefits. If you that's say I'm not coming I'm back. Just, uh, I'm just talking about psychologically. Oh, they they believe it's their own choice. So, oh, okay. Uh, of course, yeah. As as HR, of course, it's 
it's easier on them. They do not need to deal right, with laying somebody off. Right. So, right. Uh, I think I think it's all hogwash, and I'll, uh, what I mean by that is it's too soon to even understand, right? The fact that some feeling about that existed and people have been hoping that this would work out, that is all great, but we do not know the actual effect long term, right? Because back to office mandate, which is one thing, right, is interesting. But the fact is, it's still unclear whether not working in the office versus working uh, in the office, right, has any benefit. It's, it's unclear. It's not like clear cut. Working remote is always better for uh, knowledge uh, workers, right, versus working uh, uh, in the office. So all of this is, is all speculation. It's interesting, but not, not, I don't think it's any, there's any conclusion about this yet. Anybody will believe whatever they want based on yeah. whatever uh, uh, research, right, they can find. So that's right. And those of you that have iPads, I, and I didn't know that iPad did not have a calculator app. It, does. it says the iPad is finally getting a calculator app as part of iPad OS 18. Maybe a built-in one from Apple uh, as, I don't know. as versus that you need to go and download Wait. something. Let me so see. Maybe. It says the long requested app was just announced by Apple at WWDC 2024 on its face. On its on its face, the app looks a lot like the calculator you might be familiar with from iOS. But it also supports Apple Pencil, meaning that you can write down math problem problems and the app will solve them thanks to a feature Apple called Math Notes. But now I have now I don't know. I got to see if because I have my iPad right in front of me, so I got to see if I actually do a calculator. Well, I mean, it says that the long requested app was just announced. It doesn't come with a calculator. That doesn't make <laughs> any sense because my my iPhone has a calculator. Yeah, app built into it. So iOS. I that's iOS. That's not iPad OS. But that's I, the, yeah, but they use, they use the same OS, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. Uh, I don't yeah, know. I, no, because uh, on my iPhone, it has a built into the hotkeys or sort of. So like you could you could pull down your men menu, like just pull down on your screen, and it has like all the things that you normally want to do, like turn on airplane mode, make the volume louder, and then there's a hotkey for a camera and for the calculator. So I did the hot the hotkey menu for the iPad, and it's not on there. So I was like, that's weird. So then I went to the app library and Googled it, and there's no cal – why would right. they put the calculator app on there? That's so stupid. Well, there's going to be. Is, uh, this is Apple's uh, 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 3.5 uh, regular jack all over <laughs> again. Do you remember that? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm blown away. I didn't realize. I guess I just use my phone all the time for my, my calculator stuff, but that's, I just assumed it was there. Uh-huh. Amazing. No calculator. how useless it's going to be even now that it's implemented. Oh. <laughs> the the 1% of probably the, that actually wanted the calculator there. <laughs> <laughs> um. This is something that it's kind of, I, I didn't understand. It took me a few times. The Turing test, first proposed as the imitation game by computer scientist Alan Turing in 1950, mm -hmm. judges whether a machine's ability to show intelligence is indistinguishable from a human. For a machine to pass the Turing test, it must be able to talk to somebody and fool them into thinking it is human. Scientists decided to replicate this test by asking 500 people to speak with four respondents. 
including a human, in the 1960 era AI program Eliza, Eliza, as well as both GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, the AI that powers GPT. The conversations lasted five minutes, after which participants had to say whether they believed they were talking to a human or an AI. In the study published on May 9th to the preprint ARXIV ARXIV server, the scientists found that participants judged GPT-4 to be human 54% of the time. It's amazing now to be able to listen to when you like when it used to be an answering machine, so to speak. I mean, like you call I can't remember, especially like if you call Amazon. You know it's an AI. And it's it's it doesn't sound it sounds like a person, but the the music of it or the the tone that it's spoken is the same, so you know it's an AI. Yeah, but I, I wonder when they said talk, was it a chat or was it? No, talking, speech? talking, talking, speaking. Uh, uh, I think that's all tied to not necessarily the AI itself. Oh, it has a lot the more. Voice engine, yeah. Yeah, it's the the engine, everything that has to do with it. Yeah. But still, to for people to think, fifty four people, fifty four percent of of 500 people to say, yeah, this one was a real person I talked with. Yeah, wow. I wonder, though, I wonder if those same 54%, what they said about talking with the human. Um, like, there was like some... If they, if they the, it was talking with the human, it was very... 100%. It was a lot lower. I, I didn't exactly. include everything, but yeah. Uh, that's why I don't... I, that's why this... I, it's exactly ties into what I said earlier. These tests, right? They're not. They're not moving us forward in any way. No. No, I mean they. It's just uh, for them to find something else. Yeah. They're interesting, but they're not. I don't think there's any anything meaningful here. Okay. Remember it's last. That people are. People are just bad at distinguishing. That's all. It's not about they, uh, whether the machine is better. I think it's people are getting worse uh, at, at identifying. The, the waters are muddied. It will make easier for machines to identify people, not the other way around. Not for machines to identify machines. Right. What is Alan says here? He says there is a YouTube video mentioning every. I can't read it. Anyway, um, last week we talked about th that uh, uh, co-pilot with the recall. What was it two weeks ago? Yeah. So in an unprecedented move, Microsoft has announced that its big Copilot Plus PC, PC initiative that was unveiled last week would launch without its head, headlining Windows Recall AI feature next week on June 18th. So they're not going to release that. The feature, which captures snapshot of your screen every few seconds, was revealed to store sensitive user data in an unencrypted state raising serious concerns about security researchers and experts yeah. at least they listen That's yeah well I, yeah. yeah if you know it's 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 amazing that <laughs> that they were even considering something yeah. like that you know um and and again microsoft 
Speaking of Microsoft, the House Homeland Security Committee is grilling Windows President Brad Smith Thursday, last Thursday, about the software giant's plans to improve its security after a series of devastating hacks reached into federal officials, uh, officials' email accounts, challenging the company's fitness as a dominant government contractor. The questioning followed withering report on one of those breaches where the Federal Cyber Safety Review Board found the event was made possible by a cascade of avoidable errors in a security culture that requires an overhaul. In that hack, suspected agents of China Ministry of State Security last year created digital keys using a tool that allowed them to pose as an existing Microsoft customer. Using the tool, they impersonated 22 organizations, including the U.S. Department of State and Commerce, and rifled through Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo email, among others. It's... Okay. I mean, Microsoft cannot really see everything that's going on, but they had, because they're the largest email provider, they get the, the largest hacks to their email. Yeah, I believe so as well. But I wonder what is the chain of, chain of, what was the chain of bad? Uh, A cascading, or, yeah. yeah cascade. Where was it? Cascade of avoidable errors. Yeah. And yeah. I wonder what, what those are. That's that's probably the most interesting part. And, and we'll probably realize that every single step is against, you know, like common use or something. But yeah. Um, I wonder where it started. That's That's the interesting part, I think, of a... Every every uh, exploit that we hear about, right? Uh, some of them super alarming. They usually mean you need to have some sort of initial access first. And I think the key is always to understand that initial access, because that is where probably between seventy and eighty percent of it is about education. It's about how to lock your door before you go to sleep, right? It's like it's like simple steps that just needs to be part of our uh, routine, of our of the way we think, of the way we act. Uh, like what we say at the end of the show, don't use the same password on all of your services, right? Stuff like that. Uh, it's just about behavior and modification of behavior in order to stay safe. So that's why the first steps, those are the interesting ones. What can happen afterwards? That is usually just the shit show that happens after access has been provided, right? And so while that is the part that Hollywood would take and, uh, and make a movie out of it, the first step are usually uh, the ones that are probably the most interesting to understand the behavior around them and how to stop. So, yeah. All right, that's all the stories I have. Um, Alan is adding in the chat about AI. He said, instead of saying Louisville, Kentucky, when fed Louisville KY, it would say Louisville Kai. <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> as, as a foreigner in the USA, right? People in the USA did not learn the English alphabet the way I learned. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. True. Yeah. All right. Anything else you guys want to want to add? We're we're going to start cutting back the length of the show slowly. Yeah, I got Until we reach an hour. 
No, I mean, it, that's it. Do you have anything to add? Um, no, I think I think I had something, but I think we talked about everything. All right. Yeah. yeah. My brain is empty. Okay. And if you joined us late and didn't hear, we are considering cutting the show back to one hour and maybe moving it to another day in the evening. So we, we're looking for input. So if you want to add your opinion, you can always send it to hosts at computers2know.com and we'll get it and and we will put some kind of a poll and question on on the website and yeah we came up with some good good info between us all right well so let's end it here again happy father's day to the fathers out there And Happy thank Father's you. Day. Huh? Happy Father's yep. Day as well. And thanks and to you. And thank you, Gal. And thank you, Katie. Um, and good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Dana, Dina, Mati, Eleanor, Sarid, Yaakov, and Yael. Thank you, everybody, for tuning to Computers 2K. Now, we hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing. Back up your hard drive, update your virus scanner, and change any same passwords where you need them. Also, remember to do the 3 2 1 backup routine to make sure that you don't lose data. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9, but you can always reach us at computers2know.com. And Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., Nick is on Wilmington's 980 The Wave and 107.9 107 FM with his daily routine, daily political show. Uh, you can tell your... Echo device to play 980 The Wave and listen to it live, or you can go to the recordings later on at nickcraig.com. And Nick and Brian also do the Infection podcast, which is a gaming podcast, survival games, gaming, and some political points. Uh, during the week, you need to go to infectionpodcast.com and find out when is the live one or download the podcast from there. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll be together again next week. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an mp3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com and DeltaForce.net.